Hi everybody! This time I would like to try something really simple. It is one of the simplest fractals that you have probably seen before and it is called the Sharpinsky Triangle. The code can demonstrate simple transformations and also model the resulting effect by removing pixels in each iteration. So let's get started. Okay, so as usual, I will create a new scene, add a color rack to it and apply a shader to it using shader material. This time, we will change the size of the color rack to achieve a nice equilateral triangle, but I'll leave that for the end of the tutorial. So right click, create new scene, let's call it CR, okay, Sharpinski triangle. Create, uh, right click, add child no color act, and let's give it the usual dimensions 600. Eh, sorry, six numlock six by 400. And the material new shader material, click and new shader canvas item shaders folder and create and click to open in the editor very well uh, let's start like we always start with deleting what isn't necessary leaving only the fragment function and light good so uh, this time i won't be re recalculating the aspect ratio because we actually want to take advantage of our color rect not being square. So no uniform parameter for resolution as usual and we'll go straight to writing the code. And to make the code more readable, I will write the fractal generation in a separate function, which uh, I will then call from the fragment function. I'll start with the simplest part, creating a triangle from half of our color act. Let's do it here. So it will return float, call it fractal, and the input parameter, let's call it p. It will be just a point at the current uh, UV coordinates. And now triangle if px plus py is greater than 1, let's return 0 or in other cases we'll return 1 1 for a white pixel and 0 for the black one I will explain this code in a moment but now I will add uh, the fragment function so first vec2 UV is UV internal and let's assign uh, the color to the current pixel which is vector 4 and we will simply use the result of the fractal function so it would be either zeros or ones with UV as the parameter okay wait for it yeah here it is so, as we know, UV coordinates are in the range from 0 to 1, with 0, 0 over there representing the top left corner and 1, 1 the bottom right. Therefore, all points to the right of this diagonal. Satisfy this condition, Px plus Py is greater than 1, so 0 is returned for them, and 1 for everything else. However, Something is not right with the triangle. The apex should be on the other side. We can easily fix that by subtracting the y coordinate from 1 right here. So uv dot y would be decreased by, uh, no, no, would be 1 minus uv dot y. Great. But the apex should be in the middle of this edge, not in the corner. Let's do one more transformation. Uh, UV, UVX 
would be decreased by uv y sorry uv y and divided by 2 to make it to the middle of the edge very well and now uh, we can see that the condition in the fractal function is not sufficient and needs to be improved previously it was not necessary because the triangle occupied the area up to the left edge but now <coughs> but now we need to trim something more this part uh, we'll do this in the x direction and also in the y direction just in case we move the triangle later so it would be here like px must be less than 1 and py must be less than 1 i think that's not everything and i mean or not and but or or is it here uh, px must be a negative number wait there we go now let's temporarily remove the vertex shift for a moment because the next algorithm will be easier to understand if it's uh, in its untransformed form so i will just comment this out and we are back to this kind of triangle very well so to obtain the first iteration we need to divide this rectangle into four smaller ones and then split them again diagonally into two triangles let's write the corresponding code in the fractal function okay so here it is <coughs> we'll multiply p by 2 just to increase the scale the zoom factor and work not on the on full uh, rectangle but just this part and let's use the same condition as we already have here but in a simplified form because we can get rid of this i'll explain briefly all right and here we just return zero for a new hole in the object here it goes so as we can see the condition for removing pixels uh, from smaller rectangles like this one is practically the same as we already used i just removed uh, this part that's because uh, all calculations now take place inside the main triangle so we will never get to the left of it there is nothing else to the left even if this apex is shifted however we won't write the same code for each iteration over and over it would be better to perform the calculation in a loop but first let's define the number of fractal levels using a uniform parameter uniform <coughs> int levels with some hint range and let's start at one level which is basically what we can see right here so it will be from 1 to 10, to 10 and yes now the loop so we will put this code into the loop for and i from 0 to the number of levels i plus plus and as i said let's wrap this code into the loop and fix the indentation and this one okay now it's correct very well and let's try changing uh, the shader parameter levels ah huh? can you see the problem let's go back we can see that we forgot to do something because the algorithm only works on the bottom left quadrant but uh, ignores the rest so we need to consider the ones above the current sector and to the right let's do it like this wait i just 
add some more to see the result instantly. So if px is greater than 1, let's decrease px and wait. Yeah, this is the one. Now the other one. We'll do the same but for the py. If py is greater than 1, let's decrease the value of py. Great, we're done. So we can activate the displacement of the top vertex to nicely align uh, the triangle. It is this line. Let's remove the comment. Nice. Let's try other iterations. And back to the first one, or second, third, four, fourth. Very well. We can still improve the code a bit and take advantage of the fact that Boolean values, true and false, can be converted to float values 1 and 0, like this. So instead of using these ifs, we will simply uh, wait, I copy that and write px is decreased by float value of this condition. And we shouldn't see any difference here. And now the other one, py, would be decreased by float. Eh, I don't have the bracket here of that. And delete the original condition. So we definitely saved some lines here. Very well. And now for the final adjustment I mentioned at the beginning. The fractal would look better if we had only equilateral triangles throughout. Therefore, we need to calculate the correct height, this line, of the main triangle and use it in the color act. Let's scroll up here, yeah, this y coordinate of the size vector. Correct. It's because uh, it's easy because we know that this side has a length, I mean, this side has a length of 600 pixels, so the half of that would be 300 pixels, and in equilateral triangle, this hypotenuse of this right angle triangle would also have a length of 600 pixels. So according to the Pythagorean theorem, and the height of the triangle will be approximately 519, I guess. Yes, there we go. And we're done. By the way, the removed points have an alpha channel value of zero. So they are completely transparent, as we can see right here in the material preview. And it also means that we can use the finished fractal with any background or combine it with another fractal. Thank you for watching. And if you found the explanation of today's shader understandable, I would appreciate it if you could like this video or leave a nice comment. So have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.